I can honestly say that the hardest, most difficult part in embroidery, hands down, no questions asked, is the digitizing phase. And exactly what is digitizing? So digitizing is when you take a JPEG, a picture, a logo, or a vector, and convert it into stitches. The embroider machine, it only speaks one language, and that is X's and Y's. So they are coordinate points that you are telling the machine exactly where to make each stitch. And the machine is gonna do whatever you tell it to do. Okay, it's not gonna ask any questions. It's not gonna tell you whether you're right or wrong. If you tell it to go left, it's gonna go left. If you tell it to go right, up, down, wherever you tell it to go, that's where it's going. And usually the only time you know you're wrong is on the final stitch out. Or if you start breaking needles, then you know something's wrong with your digitizing. So in today's video, I wanna go over the five major reasons why digitizing is so hard. Not just hard as in to do, but why is it so hard to understand? And I also wanna go over the best three ways to learn how to digitize. Okay, so first we'll talk about why is it so hard? And then we'll talk about how to go about learning best way to approach the learning side of digitizing. Okay, reason number one why digitizing is so hard is because what you see is not always what you get. Usually in graphic designing, whatever you see on the screen, that's what's gonna print out. But that's not the way it works in digitizing. Because stitching, what's happening when you're stitching, okay, these stitches are actually pulling onto your material. So it's like they're fighting to get into place. So if you zoom in, all right, so if you use your magnifying glass and you kind of see what's going on with these stitches, these stitches are trying to find a nice, happy place to rest on. But before they do that, they're gonna pull on and get situated. Now we have to overcompensate for any of this pulling, any of this pushing of these stitches. So you're gonna hear the word push-pull compensation. That's what they're talking about. These stitches, they're pushing, they're pulling, they're trying to get situated on that garment. That's what I mean when I say what you see is not always what you get. Sometimes you have to overcompensate for your design. Of course, that is the number one, I would say is the number one reason what makes digitizing so hard because you have to predict what these stitches are going to do. And the way you predict is my reason number two why digitizing is so hard. You have to understand material, fabric material. All right, so number two is different materials require different tweaks. All right, so the way you approach a hat would be different the way you approach a polo shirt, something that's very stretchy. You're going to use different principles, different techniques. Also, when we're talking about different materials, we're talking about different underlay, we're talking about different densities. So now you have to know exactly the coverage. Why are you making specific changes? And why are you adding specific settings? So number two reason, okay? You have to, you have, while you're designing, you have to visualize this in your head what's happening in the actual world. Because you're seeing it on a screen, but you have to visualize it and anticipate what's going to happen, okay? So easily, number two, you have to know materials. You have to know how different stitches react to different materials, okay? So easily, number two, reason why digitizing so difficult, because materials act different. Number three, the reason why digitizing is so hard, I compare it to chess. Okay, so growing up, I was a big, big chess player. I still love chess. I don't play it as much as I used to. But for those who play chess, you know you got to start thinking about your next three, four, five, six, seven, eight moves. That's the same thing with digitizing. Digitizing, you pretty much have to already anticipate where you're going to start, where you're going to end. And you have to know as you're digitizing, what are your next three, four moves? So the third reason why digitizing is so hard is sequencing. So sequencing, it plays a major role in how fast you're going to digitize. Also, how fast you're going to embroider. In order to avoid unnecessary cuts, unnecessary jumps, your sequencing has to be laid out properly. Number four reason why digitizing is so hard. Now, this is, I think, is the biggest obvious one. 
And that's because software is expensive. Not anybody can just get into digitizing. You have to have a major, major reason why you want to get into digitizing. Then you got to make an investment. Now, the investment can be anywhere from the most cheapest software to the most expensive. So we're talking about anywhere from like a thousand bucks to about six grand. So somewhere in between there, you got to make a decision on exactly where you want to land in the digitizing spectrum. Of course, there's the less expensive one, which I would recommend to use it just to learn, just to kind of get yourself situated before you make that big jump investment with all sorts of features. Now, the one thing about embroidery, digitizing, is everything is still based on one stitch, okay? We're always moving from one coordinate to another coordinate. The only thing that separates software is special features and making digitizing run faster and smoother, all right? But overall, a stitch is a stitch, okay? Worst case scenario, you're manually stitching your stitches, all right? And you're gonna try to figure out ways to be more efficient. But as you go into the more expensive ones, okay, you're gonna be a little bit more efficient. You can always easily start with the most basic digitizing software and work your way up. Okay, number five, the reason why digitizing is so hard, that's because it is so time consuming. One, you have to learn it, then you have to take the time and actually punch in and design your embroidery designs. Then you gotta test it out and you gotta do that over and over and over and over, right? That takes a lot of time. Okay, we're living in a world where we all have a thousand things to do. And usually to learn how to digitize takes hours, 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 weeks, 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 months, 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 up to years. Even once you got it down, you're still testing, you're still testing on different materials, you're still experimenting. Okay, so the time you're putting into digitizing. That is the reason why it's so difficult because you have to find the time to do it. And sometimes that's not good enough, okay? Finding time is not good enough. You have to make time. You literally have to clear everything what you're doing and you have to learn this stuff. Now, under time consuming, this is a major reason why, especially when you're starting out, why it's so important to send out your digitizing artwork to a real good digitizer. There are very good digitizers out there that will take a that will take a design and they've already put in their time to learn all this stuff so they're going to knock it out real quick okay so of course when you're starting best thing to do is send it out because reason number 5 it's so time consuming but once you make the time and you learn it once you get it you got it okay you're moving fast once you conquer the time consuming portion where you have to put in your 10,000 hours, right? In order to master something, you have to have 10,000 hours under your belt. Whether the 10,000 hour rule applies to digitizing, I think it does because you are going to put in hours. Now, those were the five reasons why digitizing is so hard. Now, let's talk about the three best ways how to learn how to digitize, okay? So we talked about why is it so hard. Let's talk about What's the best way to approach and learn how to digitize? Okay, so real quick, number one, the best way to learn how to digitize. These are not in any particular order, but the number one way how to learn is study well-made digitizing files. Okay, so if you have a folder filled with great designs from your best digitizer, study them replay them view it over and over and over ask yourself why are they doing it like this why are they starting here why are they ending there look at all the five reasons that i kind of went over look at the compensation they added look at the underlays look at the sequencing look for any efficiency techniques that are being used by studying files by asking questions okay you can answer a lot of your own questions. So you're kind of like playing detective. You're analyzing and researching certain good files and learning 
from files. From day one, I've always done that. I've always looked at files and I just replay them. I replay them over and over and over and I'm asking all the who, what, where, when, how, whys. Why are you doing this? Why are you starting here? All right. And of course, you can always make files better. You could have recommendations like, hey, if I would have designed this, I would have started here because there's never a right or wrong answer. How to digitize something. OK, at the end of the day, if something looks great, if something was done very efficiently, it's a great file. But every file can always be better. OK, so you can always have your recommendations. And then the best thing to do is to actually replicate it and maybe add some changes on how you would do it. And number two, best way to learn how to digitize, of course, most obvious way is practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more stitches you have under your belt, the more hours you have clocked in, there is zero ways you can fail if you're practicing. So with practicing, that's where you're getting your 10,000 hours. You have to have to practice. And also when you're practicing a lot of your samples, you're saving a lot of those samples because what you want to do, you want to see what worked, what didn't work. And you're practicing on different types of material. You're practicing on hard, strong materials and you're practicing on very stretchy, light materials, fluffy materials, all sorts of materials. It's always good practice to go to your local fabric store and just buy a yard of all sorts of random material. Just so when somebody hits you up and asks you for a certain type of project, you've already experimented, you've already did the heavy lifting, and now you know how to go about approaching certain designs. The third best way to learn how to digitize, okay, this is actually a plug for my brand new Saturday morning embroidery class. Starting January 1st, 2022, so starting on New Year's, I'm going to have an embroidery class every Saturday morning starting January 1st, 2022. Okay, so this class is going to be nothing but embroidery. This is going to be a free class. It's going to be live. So that gives you the ability to ask any questions as I'm working live. So currently I'm getting the studio ready. I'm getting all the, the live streaming equipment situated just so we could have different angles from the digitizing to the hooping to the embroidery. OK, so we're going to do it all Saturday mornings. All right. And of course, if you can't make it, these shows are going to be always available on the YouTube channel. All right. But you definitely want to show up live ready to take notes because every class is going to be packed with information and we're going to start very basic and slowly get into the more expert type designs. So by the end of the year, okay, we should all be on our way to that expert level on digitizing on embroidery. All right. So make sure you subscribe, you put a notification and you, you, you also put a notification on your phone. So, you know, Saturday morning we have an embroidery Saturday morning school. So today I want to thank you for stopping by for hanging out with me today. Okay. Make sure of course you subscribe and you leave your questions or comments down below. And of course I will reply ASAP. See you on the next video. Peace out.